Good evening, everybody. I'm uh, Scott Myers, principal of the high school here at St. Louis Park. And uh, I've been in St. Louis Park my entire educational career. Uh, started at the middle school, uh, teaching seventh and eighth grade. Um, I was one of those strange teachers that really loved middle school. I know sometimes teachers say, I don't know how people do it. Uh, I loved it a lot. Uh, transitioned uh, about six or seven years ago to our assistant principal position here at the high school. I did that for a little over three years, and then now this is my fourth year as the high school principal. So uh, I love the school. I think it's the best in Minnesota, easily. Uh, sometimes I hesitate to limit it to Minnesota, but um, I'm really glad that you're here. Uh, thank you for making the choice, uh, both to come here tonight, but also to select our high school, because I know there's a lot of options out there. Um, our hope and our aim for tonight is to give you some information. Uh, registration can be uh, definitely a nerve-wracking process, uh, especially if it's your first time. Uh, so we're hoping to answer a lot of those questions um, and then make it as smooth as possible. Schedule changes uh, can be a little bit of a dilemma uh, as students definitely come in the fall. So we're hopeful that uh, you're able to get enough information here tonight to make the, the best choices you can uh, as students start off here at school. Um, I would love to talk to you more to get to know you, but I'll have an opportunity to do that on the night of our uh, orientation. Um, so what I'm gonna do is turn it over to the person who can best serve your needs today, which is uh, Barb Nelson, one of our, our ninth grade counselors, uh, our only ninth grade counselor, I should say. Uh, she's been here for quite some time. I'll let her introduce herself, but uh, she'll be taking great care of you. And I'll stick around for a while here just to see if there's any questions afterwards. So again, thank you for coming and here's Barb. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Um, yes, my name is Barb Nelson. I've been the ninth grade counselor now in my 20th year, believe it or not, which is, seems crazy to me um, that we've been doing this, or I've been doing this this long, and I'm actually a proud Park graduate as well. I actually have a ninth grader this year up in Maple Grove, uh, Maple Grove High School, and last year when I was doing this, I really had to sit and kind of sympathize, empathize, empathize, I don't know what's the right word, because I just going through it, and, and even though I'm a high school counselor in a different school, um, having to really go through the registration process was a little overwhelming. So I really want you to know that we want you to be here, take what you can. We're actually recording these presentations so they'll, from Park TV, so thank you for being here, and we're gonna have this online for people that were not able to be here um, so they can get their questions answered as well um, because we know it's kind of can be an overwhelming process, but we're here with you every step of the way, and really kids start to go through this process every year at about this time, so they should kind of get used to that. And so we'll go through um, graduation requirements, selecting courses, and answer any questions you may have at the end. So this is registration for the whole school year for next year. They do their full year course selection on the pink sheet that uh, most of you have or grabbed. Uh, the students today actually in science class at the middle school should have heard a little podcast from me and um, gotten the pink sheet. And so um, I did actually already get feedback from one of the science teachers saying, oh, they had like a half hour's worth of questions afterwards. And we've really gone back and forth with how we've done this registration process. And we may need to revamp that and take a look at it and try to figure out what's best in terms of meeting their needs because when we used to go spend an hour with them um, at the middle school and then we'd go back two weeks later in the computer lab, it was as if we hadn't even been there. So it was, it, we're kind of trying to work on both sides and try to figure out what the best way is. So if there are suggestions, I'm thinking about maybe even an eighth grade assembly kind of next year where they all hear the information and then we go back maybe a couple weeks later to do the actual online uh, registration process. So. My contact number um, and email is up there, so feel free if there's questions that pop up, pop up along the way. Um, we, like I said, are here to answer them. I am the only ninth grade counselor, so it's just me. I actually end up doing eighth to ninth grade and then also the ninth to 10th grade transition. So um, after those two years, you'll be done listening to me talk. Um, so we'll get you through and get you good information tonight so you're set up um, to help your uh, sons or daughters make the best decision possible. 
Um, so, you know, just again, tonight we're here doing this, but on the 27th, um, so in a few weeks uh, in the, at the middle school, all the counselors go over and we do classroom presentations in a computer lab. They're literally step-by-step step going through with us and entering their course requests into PowerSchool, so it's really helpful for them to have their PowerSchool username and password. Um, we get them set up and um, there's always kind of some of those questions that are very unique to your particular student, and all of us as counselors have kind of dealt with that kids who want to try to do two musics or two language or they're doing umpty ump math or things like that so we are used to kind of dealing with those things you can also make notes on the pink sheet if there's any questions you have about things and we keep those in a three ring binder so I can refer to them uh, the following fall when we're dealing with any conflicts or questions or issues that come up so a couple of things just about the high school in general, if you aren't familiar. Um, some of you, this may be your first student coming here. I know I saw a lot of familiar faces that have gone through this before. So see to all those new parents, you can do this. It's OK. You make it all the way through. Um, we operate on a seven period day semester based system. And so uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, students here start at 8.20. Tuesday and Thursday, they start at 8.40. And then all days, we end at 3.10. So the school day, uh, the class periods are shortened just a little bit on Tuesdays and Thursdays to allow for some teacher meeting time um, on those mornings. And this year, for example, Thursdays uh, was a time for teachers to have office hours. Basically, students can come in, you know, get extra help, retake a test, um, any number of things kind of working with teachers. Um, places like the Media Center and our Learning Lab are open for extra support if students need those resources as well. Um, and then the semester-based system, we are broken down into quarters, but unlike the middle school where students get a quarter grade each quarter, the quarter grades for us at the end of first quarter and third quarter are really just that mid-semester marking period, kind of a progress report. It's that final semester grade that starts their official high school transcript and is the grade that kind of counts towards their grade point average. Um, so that's a concept that you can help kind of let your um, students know. Um, it really, they even, it always happens happens before winter break they're like oh are we done with you know first semester and it's like nope we come back have a couple more weeks of class and then we have actual final tests before the end of the semester so they'll kind of get used to that as we get started with things but it's the final semester grades that are the ones that count for them and then with ninth graders, we do something a little different, and it's part of um, a, a bigger concept called the Building Assets Reducing Risks Program that you'll hear more about at the fall uh, freshman orientation or parent orientation that we have. Um, it's something that was started here back when I started 20 years ago, and it's actually spread across the country. There's uh, many schools that are um, implementing the BAR program, which basically is having a team of teachers work with your students, um, as well as support people and some other things that are in place to help make sure they don't fall through the cracks in ninth grade. Um, so in ninth grade specifically, it's their social studies, which is civics, econ, their English, and then their science. And whether they choose the honors in the honors civics, econ, or the AP environmental science or science nine, those teams of teachers work together and then work with the support staff in turn as well. Um, and if you have been around a little bit, it used to be that the honors classes were kind of an all or nothing approach. Um, and we've gone away from that where students can self-select into individual courses. And I'll talk more about that when we get to that section. So students can make individual choices um, for those course areas. And math, too, is a separate process than that. They're not necessarily blocked with those team of teachers. It's just those three, and math is separate from that. If your um, student receives special education, they have an individual education plan. There's also someone that works alongside with me as a case manager. Um, if you've had it in the elementary and or middle school, you're probably used to that concept, but that person at the high school becomes kind of a, a go-to person for you and works with us with the scheduling process. And as I mentioned, we do um, kind of a welcome and a transition for freshmen in the fall. Uh, typically, it's usually the Wednesday prior to school starting that we invite students in. They come in for a full morning of activity. We start in here. Um, do a presentation for all and then send them with one of their teachers and they actually get to go through a seven period kind of walkthrough of their schedule. So they're finding their way around the building, kind of going from class to class, trying to find and open their locker um, and kind of just to get the lay of the land. And we end that day with an activity fair where they can um, 
get a chance to talk to a variety of students and all the different um, athletics and activities that we have here. So it's a good way for them to kind of see what's going on um, and hopefully kind of think about activities they may want to join. And we realize that day can somewhat be a little overwhelming and kids are usually excited to see friends and kind of talk with people. So what we do is um, we started this a couple years ago where we repeat that activity fair kind of in a smaller setting outside the high school cafeteria that kind of second week of school where they can um, you know, walk through just outside the cafeteria and get a chance to talk to students that are sitting at tables there as well in a smaller setting and then sign up for any of the activities that they may be interested in. And then typically that same uh, evening, uh, that day, we do a separate orientation for parents. So similar to this where you'll come in, we spend a lot more time about kind of the back to school and nuts and bolts and answer any questions um, for you. That's where we explain a little bit more about that ninth grade program and share information about that with you. Um, if you've had a chance to look around on the high school website, um, our communications department has just kind of completed the update process of any of the course uh, descriptions. So I'll maybe at the end just jump out of the PowerPoint and show you where you can find that um, under students and 2018-19 registration. So this is where the video will be. There's all the different forms. Um, any class descriptions, and that's the biggest thing um, we'll be going through on here. It's pretty limited in terms of what freshmen can do, but I think it's great for them to start to look ahead at other courses and see what things they might be interested in you know, over the course of their four years here. There's actually a four-year planning sheet that students can find on that site and be able to kind of start to look through, like, what are some things I might be interested in wanting to take over the, the four years? And then um, we talked a little bit, there are a variety of different classes. Um, honors, mostly in ninth grade, one that goes into 10th grade. And then we have both advanced placement and international baccalaureate. And if you are not familiar with those programs, there where students can take courses at a higher level, a more rigorous level, and have the potential to earn some college credit, uh, depending on how they do typically on an exam at the end of that one year or two years in the case of IB. Um, and then potentially, um, go off to schools that would grant them credit for their participation in those classes here. Um, there is more information, a lot more on the website in both um, IB and AP, um, and, and I should add to that, I guess, PSEO, which is another thing we cover typically in the upper grade levels, but post-secondary education options is another thing that students can take advantage of, um, taking classes at a local uh, university or college to uh, get high school as well as college credit that they get started on their transcript with. So those are some different programs and we'll talk more about honors in just a little bit here in ninth grade. The graduation requirements, um, I realize this is small. You should have gotten it on the letter that came home. Um, with kind of advertising this evening session. And then I believe students were given another copy today if they took that. So I didn't make extra copies of those, but this is also on the, the high school website. And so just in a nutshell, we talked about how we're a semester-based system. So 46 is that magic number for students, uh, 46 semester credits. So that means a D minus or above is passing, um, and they would get the credit in that class. Study halls do not get the credit, do not earn a credit. Um, and typically, if students in ninth grade do not have a full year of world language or a music, or, or, or and a music, I should say, they will have at least one semester of a study hall. And so, um, Basically, that's kind of the staffing formula we've used over the last several years. If there happens to be space in an elective second semester, we would look to add them. But generally speaking, if they're doing a full year of world language and a music, that would be their full seven period schedule, which we'll get to. And then if they are not, that would be where they'd have a, a study hall one semester or the other. So most classes or all classes other than that carry a credit. So one credit for one semester. So when you're talking full year courses like English, social studies, math, and science, they would earn two credits for the full year of those. When you're looking at the graduation requirements, you'll see with English and Social Studies, it requires eight credits of each of those to graduate. So that's something students are taking all the way through high school. And there's a, a proposal of kind of courses laid out, English 9, 10, 11, 12, and so on with the Social Studies classes. And in each of those areas, there's honors um, in some cases, or AP or IB. So if they go above and beyond the typical requirement, they're gonna uh, meet their requirement as far as what's required for graduation. 
Um, in the state of Minnesota, there are standards that are built into all these classes, and that's why we have, for example, in social studies, the civics econ class in ninth grade, world history, U.S. history, and then there's uh, little choice in the senior social studies electives that students have. And they should have actually, um, when they get into high school, they hear a presentation from the social studies department on that. And then math and science, there are six credits of each of those. There's a little asterisk that kind of points to the bottom there, strongly suggested coursework. By and large, most of our students will end up taking a fourth year in both uh, the math and science area. It really is about, obviously, the best preparation while you're in high school for looking ahead to post-secondary plans. Um, but what's required is uh, six credits in each of those. Math, they have to have three years of math through advanced algebra or its equivalent. And then in science, it's one year of biology, one year of chemistry or physics, and one year of an elective science. Most of the time, ninth grade counts for that elective science, but many, many students go on to physics, for example, in their senior year. Um, one thing, and I'll just point that out right here, um, on the high school website there are pathways in each of the kind of four big departments, the language arts or English, social studies, science, and math, and this happens to be the math one. So it kind of shows, you know, in eighth grade if your student was doing this, what they would do in ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th as some potential pathways. This might not be all the pathways, but they do the same thing in each of those other departments. So it kind of lets you know, you know, if I'm taking this class, what are some options in each of the different grade levels as you go across, and then what are the different electives in those areas? Some of the electives, there's not many that you can select in ninth grade that would be subject to this, but they may not be, we may not be able to run. There may not be an interest level. We may not have uh, a teacher, which is a rare occurrence, but uh, just so that you know, there, when people do register for electives, there's a possibility that the course may not run. The good news for ninth grade parents uh, is that it oftentimes those courses will run because they're pretty stable. Uh, but just something to know that that could start as early as uh, freshman year. If a student picks an elective, that class may or may not be available once the fall starts. So, okay. Yeah, and we'll get to that on the pink sheet. There's a place for alternates, kind of like a second choice for students. And oftentimes that does happen when things are full or it just doesn't work in their schedule. So we'll, we'll get to that in a few minutes. Um, with health, students do one credit of embedded health over four years, and this was something we went to a few years back where students are, over the four years, think of it as 0.25 of a credit um, per year in health to give them one credit by the time they graduate. They are doing four classes, so it's like a Monday through Thursday, kind of fall, winter, spring, if you look at it that way. So they have 12 sessions each of their 9th, 10th, and 11th grade years. They do that twice in their senior year, and they also need to sign up for a time to do their CPR certification, and that's part of the Minnesota requirement for graduation. So our health program now is more developmental in nature, so what they need and, and get as a ninth grader is very different from what they may be hearing about as a senior. So that gives them the one credit uh, requirement by the time they are done. And then they have a one credit requirement in physical education. Uh, typically that's taking either first or second semester of their ninth grade year. There then are some FIAD elective classes if they uh, choose to go that route. And then fine arts, two credits are required in fine arts. So if your student is someone who does band, orchestra, or choir, they kind of would be able to check those boxes after their ninth grade year. If they continue um, beyond that ninth grade year, those credits just spill over into the electives, so they still count towards their 46. They would earn um, potentially up to eight credits, for example, if they stayed in band all the way through. So um, they can get more than that in fine arts, definitely, and there's a lot of different courses to choose from. Um, drawing and painting are listed up there, but pottery, media arts, um, there's all kinds of different classes in that uh, that meet that fine arts requirement. And then there is a class, it's kind of um, abbreviated there, Info Communication Literacy, Information Communication Lit, or ICL, kids call it around here for short. Um, that is a computer-based class where students are learning. Um, we use Google in school. They use Google Docs, learn how to kind of manipulate between that and Excel, PowerPoint, Word, um, and do, do some presentations. So there's a lot of different focuses within that class, and it's just a one-semester requirement for them as ninth graders. 
And then the career and college readiness, it's one credit over four years through the advisory class. So once a month um, on a Wednesday, there's an altered schedule and students would meet with their advisor teacher, which in ninth grade is just one of their core teachers who acts as their advisor. There's college and career readiness lessons that are delivered, um, you know, kind of everything from goal setting, um, you know, to kind of looking at college and career um, options. We do, as counselors, we come in kind of separately in the fall, typically, of their ninth grade year. I introduce all students to Naviance Family Connection, where they get to learn about a program that they have access to. Um, and I think now, you know, our middle school has used it for a number of years, so students are somewhat familiar with it. So over the course of four years, it's similar to health, where they get 0.25 of a credit uh, for the uh, each year to give them one credit by the time they are done. And then the electives, it kind of shows up there, I think the pointer works here, 12 credits uh, in the areas listed below. And there's one area to hit on specifically, it's, uh, we just call it pathways of study or career exploration courses. And um, a few years back, it probably is more than a few now, but we had kind of looked at having an academy structure at St. Louis Park and kind of what we got, have gotten to in a journey from there is looking at kind of having this pathways of, of study. And so there's five different areas. If you can't see those, they're business, engineering and technologies, health science, law and public policy and media arts. The first bar across is Career Pathways of Study Foundation courses. A few of those, the business innovations and media arts are offered in ninth grade. The rest are either 10 through 12. And so that's kind of laying the foundation for some of the courses that students would go into in those different pathways. And, you know, a few years back when we, we did this, we did a lot of research around it. It wasn't that we just kind of drew these out of a hat. They talked to local businesses, colleges and universities, looked at local economic indicators and tried to figure out what were the things that students should and could do in high school to get them prepared kind of looking at careers and more career oriented and kind of setting the stage for what they might be interested in doing after high school. And so these were the five areas and there's more development in some than others for different courses. Obviously the business and engineering and technologies, there's a lot of different courses and same with some of the media arts. Um, so different options within that. So it's pretty hard, I would say, for most students to get out of high school without taking one of these. We used to try to mandate, oh, they had to have two foundations courses and then two of the pathways of study courses, but we, it was just too hard to kind of control. So we just lay it out so families, students, parents can kind of look at it and kind of see what we're trying to get to and that um, when you're looking at graduation requirements, it just kind of says we'd love for students to take four credits as kind of a, um, a potential, but there are lots of different elective areas. You know, the other phi ed classes, as I mentioned, there's some really good electives in the science and social studies, even in music. If your student isn't in band, orchestra, or choir, there's a world drumming class, and there's just, um, it's not on, or this will be actually when your students are in 10th grade, there's a musical theater class that they've had an option in middle school, it sounds like, to take that's going to be offered here. So some different things that they can do um, in those electives to get to the 12 um, credits they need. But again, in things like, and I mentioned this earlier, but math and science, you only need six. So if you get more than that, those just count towards the elective credits that, you know, count towards the overall 46. There's just a little note on the bottom of this about strongly suggested coursework for admission to the different kind of levels, you know, whether you're looking at the state university system, the U of M system, or more private or selective schools. And again, the counselors are working with the students all the way through um, their four years doing kind of separate presentations. On the high school website, so if you're not on the district, you have to actually select the high school. And under students, that's on the bar across the top, it's picking the 2018-19 uh, registration information and you'll get to where all those course descriptions are. But when you're looking at this and kind of talking about it with your student, again, just let them know that things are really limited and that's purposeful in ninth grade. We really try to make it so kids, you know, have some good choices, have some a variety of kind of in the business or art areas to take some courses. And then from when they go into 10th and then 11th and 12th, things really open up a lot more in terms of their course requests, um, the options they have. So on the left-hand side, it's all those courses that we were kind of talking about the four big departments, the English, social studies, science, and math. Um, and when you're looking at kind of the choices there, 
basically it's the regular uh, English 9 and then honors, and we also have ESL and special ed listed, so there's places for families to mark that off. When you get into math, you'll see there's a lot more choices there, and that's one of the areas specifically kind of working with the current math teacher at the high school, there's all, or at the middle school, there's always a question about whether or not students should go into honors, and I really would encourage you to talk to the current teacher because they're going to obviously know your student best and the work ethic. The math is one of those areas where um, specifically within honors, they have students sign off on a contract. And I know for honors geometry, for example, it's pretty rigorous that you have to score at or above on, on a certain number of tests as you're beginning the semester and get a certain level of your homework turned in to maintain in that class. And so um, there are some more rigorous standards once you get into the class. You can self-select into it, but we really want to help students um, make the right choice. And actually, in the course descriptions, there's some RIT scores, um, which is the map testing your students have done for years if they've been in the district. That's the score that they get, and it equates to a percentile. But they talk about, typically, it's in the high 90s in terms of um, what they recommend for honors math. That's not to say a student who doesn't score as high wouldn't be successful, but those classes typically are um, go at a pretty fast pace, and um, students need to kind of be able to keep up with that. And then FIED and ICL are uh, listed there and checked off on the bottom that all students would be doing uh, those courses. And then on the right-hand side, this is where kind of thinking about those elective choices and options. And we try to just boil it down into the four different areas which there are some exceptions to that, but typically this is where all students fall, that they're gonna do option one, which is a world language all year and a music all year. So if they're doing that, they would have their English, social, math, science, world language, music, FIED one semester and ICL the other semester, and that's their choices. So that's kind of, I would, I'm not sure percentage-wise, but there are a large number of students that that's what they plan to do, and they're going to um, start off high school that way, not having any other elective choices. Um, you can see the level of language there, and this always comes up as a question. If your student has taken, for example, Spanish 1 in uh, middle school uh, for the two years, and I think now you could have your students taken it three years? Did they have a chance to do it in sixth grade? The students, if they've been successful in middle school, um, they would start language level two here. So they've completed level one, they would go on to level two. Some students I know maybe don't feel as strong about their um, language background or maybe want to really you know, start out with a really good grade. Again, I would defer to the world language teachers at the middle school, they're gonna know your student best. Um, and in fact, typically what they do is go through the course request list and make changes or corrections if we need to more towards the end of the year before we finalize things. Um, one area of question though is German 1. Typically there uh, has not been enough students over the years to offer a section of German 1 at the high school. So many kids do it in middle school, so they come here and they're ready for German 2 to kind of continue on that pathway and move ahead. So we have not offered German 1 for a number of years. And then if your student has been in, um, has been at PSI, Park Spanish Immersion, and has gone into the middle school ESP program, they start out with Spanish 7 here, um, which Spanish 7 then leads into Spanish 8, 9, and 10. Uh, Spanish 8 being AP Spanish language where they can take that test at the end of 10th grade. And then in 11th and 12th grade, it's the IB uh, Spanish language and literature class that they have the ability to take as well if they continue down that pathway. Some students who have been in immersion um, may you know, try to take another language, and that really isn't, there isn't a place to do two languages. We have had some students do that, so that's one of those exceptions we would kind of work through with students as we go through. Um, but they, in option one, that's kind of where things are at with the world language and music. In option two, they're doing a full year of world language, and then one of those elective choices, and there's kind of the eight standard choices that we're going through, and a study hall. Um, what we are trying to do, and hopefully it'll be on the website um, soon here, we tried to get the teachers of those elective, elective courses to do, if you've ever heard of Flipgrid, it's a way for student response to come in or some instructional, it's a short little video snippet. So we've tried to get teachers to do a little snippet of what those courses are about. It's one thing to read a description in a course book, but it's another to kind of hear an actual live person talking about a course. So um, those will be, if we, I think most of the teachers have done them now. We'll get them posted online under that high school registration area. So 
There's a variety of courses there. Um, and then option three, if they're gonna do uh, music and then an elective choice and a study hall. And then option four um, is where they could choose two of those electives if they wanted to have a study hall each semester. And in terms of just sheer numbers and kind of looking at credits, typically students earn between 12 and 14 credits each year. So even if they earn 12 every year, they'd have 48, which is two more than the 46 they need to graduate. So kids can have a study hall every semester if they wanted to. If they're really busy outside of school with younger siblings or jobs or sports or whatever it is, um, this gives them a way to have an hour during their school day to be able to work on things um, here in the building and have access to resources, whether it's a computer in the media center or the learning lab um, and working with someone there. So that is an option, although a lot of students like to fill their day and have a full day of classes um, that they have the ability to take as well. Um, and down on the bottom, and this is where it's important, and we'll have your student fill these in actually on PowerSchool. So this alternate choices is if your students basically are doing options two, three, or four. If they're doing option one, they're 99% likely to get their choices and we work that out in the schedule. If I call you in August and there's an issue, that would be something we'd have to discuss. But for the most part, those students get, um, are able to, we are able to work it out in our schedule. It's when um, they are doing a language, for example, and then have an elective choice that you know, falls at a certain hour that can't fit in their schedule or it fills up with upperclassmen. So what we want them to do is if they choose pottery, for example, but they'd be okay with painting or drawing, they will select those and put them in as their alternate choices. And this gives us a way to be able to, um, when I'm kind of working through conflicts in the fall, just be able to very quickly slot something else in for them um, you know, that would work in their schedule as well. So we'll ask them to do that for alternate choices. We would love for students to sign and parent or guardian as well, um, but when they actually sit in the lab and if they don't have that done, we're still gonna have them and put their course request um, because we need it to get done. What will happen is in PowerSchool, you'll be able to see, and I actually, I think I have a slide of this. I'm gonna jump. Yeah, this is what it looks like and you'll see, um, class registration over on the side, so in the, we kind of lock it down and you'll be able to still see the student's course request there. Um, yeah, so they, this is what I was kind of going over. They'll take one of each area and the options for electives. Um, when they get in, it's pretty user-friendly with the program itself on PowerSchool. They're just logging in, clicking on um, the little pencil, which opens up another window. They click the full year and have English 9, semester 1, semester 2, and they're okaying that. And we are, like I said, right there with them. We kind of walk them through step by step in each of those different content areas um, and make sure everybody has what they need through math and FIAD and ICL and then the bottom, which kind of gets cut off there, is the elective. So we kind of help them as we're walking around put in their elective choices. This is just kind of, it's a little wordy here. It's with all the different options, what it could look like. Um, but just to get into a discussion about honors uh, uh, in grade nine. And so this includes, again, in, in ninth grade, a choice of any of the four classes that are listed there. So honors English, honors civics, advanced placement, environmental science, and then students have the option to do an honors level of math. So again, that's not in that block or team of classes, but that is another option at the honors level. Um, if students don't choose to take honors in ninth grade, that doesn't keep them out of any other honors, advanced placement, or an IB course as they go through the rest of high school. We really value students to be able to self-select into those, and some students, the transition to high school is gonna be hard enough, and we want them to start out with the really you know, solid grades and feel good about their performance in high school. So some students will do that, just take all regular courses, or maybe one honors and then be able to, in 10th grade, kind of self-select into those other courses. Um, so it doesn't, again, hold you out of any of those courses um, at all as you go into the upper grade levels. And when you think about kind of, the questions always is, well, what's honors versus a regular class? Um, you know, what I would say to families is looking at a little more intensity or rigor in terms of what's expected outside of school, where students might, um, in a regular class, have time in a lab to type a paper. 
in honors, they might be doing that all on their own. There might be more discussion. Um, in some cases, they actually do use the same text or materials, but it's just kind of what happens beyond that, which is a little different and with the expectation with homework and outside of schoolwork. Math, I explained a little bit already that it's um, in terms of how rigorous, rigorous it is and how fast it goes. Advanced placement in the science area, that's probably where there's a, a bigger difference because advanced placement actually has a specific curriculum to prepare students for a test at the end of the year that happens in May. So they really are using, um, I, it, I think what it is is a 12th grade reading level text in that uh, AP uh, environmental science. That class though, just so you hear this loud and clear, doesn't link or connect to doing in IB biology or chemistry later on. There's no, you don't have to do this to do that. Um, if students are really interested in environmental science, it's a great course and they definitely will get something out of it. They're still doing environmental science in regular science nine. It's just not at the same level that it would be in the environmental um, or in the AP or APES as it's called, the kids like to call it. So um, again, a more rigorous and higher expectation of independence in that course specifically where there's reading notes and um, study notes you have to do. That's up to you. if it. One teacher kind of, I think both actually do, where it doesn't count against you necessarily if you don't do it, but obviously if you don't do it, you're not prepared for that test, which is the bulk of your grade in that particular course. With the Honors 9 program, we used to have, and this goes back a long time, we used to have a writing sample and select students and all of that, and we kind of have gradually over the years gone away from it and really um, in the last two years now gone to a total self-selection. We've been able to work our schedule with that, which is really nice because I think it gives kids a little bit more... Um, kind of ownership in what they take and if they feel really strong in English or they really like civics and econ, great, go that way and take honors and don't feel like you have to take all of it because when it was all or nothing, there was this real kind of, well, I'm doing honors, are you doing honors kind of thing, and which I didn't like, but I think it's one of those things that kids pick up on that. So this way, really focus with your sons or daughters, with your students that it's individualized. They need to look at where their strengths are, what they're interested in, how much balance they need in their, their lives, um, you know, inside and outside of the building. So they know kind of what their life is like after school, how much time they have for homework and things like that. Um, as a rule, some of the things we did used to consider in terms of honors and advanced placement, we looked at grades, um, seventh and eighth grade. Typically students who were A's and B's, great, honors would be a good fit. And then map testing scores was another thing we looked at. Typically students who did at or above the 80th percentile were typically successful in honors. But again, that's not to say that the student who is lower than that can't be successful in honors because we have also had the reverse where we've had students who were the 99th percentile who got D's and F's in honors courses. So it's really hard for me to stand up and say one specific thing, but in general, if your students um, have done well, whether they're in regular or accelerated courses at the middle school, they have a good work ethic, are gonna stay on top of their homework, um, stay organized, they should be okay kind of making that selection with honors courses, but it's just that kind of next step that they're looking at. Um, we've always had a lot of students who are interested in honors, and so again, trying to keep that balance and work on that within our schedule has really worked well. And, you know, again, I can't stress enough that just kids need to know themselves and their individual schedules, and I guess as parents or guardians, how much you're will willing to tolerate, like, kind of if, if they're not students that are self-motivated to kind of um, stay on top of things with work, how much you want to ride that, because it can be kind of challenging at times. Um, and just another note on honors, because we've had kind of this issue now that we've gone to this self-selection that after a specific time, we really are limiting it. So within that first week to 10 days of the semester, as we've learned more about this and kind of gone to this, kids are in it. They're in it for the semester. So if they're not doing well, that grade will be on their semester um, final grade. Um, and then at semester time, we could consider switching or dropping down from honors or AP. We've actually this year had probably more students than we have in the last couple, but again, teachers are kind of figuring this out. We've had more students switch into honors, um, specifically in civics. It's a little trickier in English because um, the way the curriculum is done, if you switch in English, you might be missing a chunk or repeating something because of the way we don't have enough books for everyone. So, you know, one teacher might be doing this in first semester and then doing it in second semester, and so you, you might miss that. But in 
And in AP, it's very challenging. You can't really jump into AP second semester. It's usually typically students who are going from AP to regular science. So civics has been the one where some students have really decided or been able to look at making that jump into honors for second semester. But we really limited it, and that's why we really want students to make good decisions now talk to um, current teachers, like we said, talk about it as a family to decide what makes the most sense in terms of kind of that balance with their schedule. And then I mentioned the honors math having a specific um, contract that, that you sign off on at the beginning of the year so everybody's kind of aware of what the, what the specific requirements are. Um, if there are any questions, like I said, feel free to reach out to me, call, email. Um, we'll be back with your students in just a short couple weeks. And then under the students, 1819 registration, there's Mr. Myers there with a little letter. But the course catalog, you can click and it expands to have all the different courses. Here's English, for example, with that pathways. You can kind of see an example of that. Um, and in the art tech, for example, all the different courses with a little bit of a description and grade levels that it's open to. With electives in all those, um, the eight options, those are cross-graded. So that would be something where if a student was taking that, they might have 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders in those various courses. So just know that about those elective areas. Um, Music, it's a little different. Uh, typically, students are going into varsity choir, which is ninth uh, grade students only. Um, there's ninth grade band, but then orchestra is cross-graded, just the way the, the music departments uh, do it differently a little bit. So any other, or any questions, I should say, at this point, we have a little bit of time. Um, sorry, it's hard to see up here, so I'm trying to find a spot where I can see you guys. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to entertain those for the large group. If there's things that kind of our burning questions for you, and it, it might be something everybody's wondering, we can answer those, and I'll try to repeat those for everybody to be able to hear. So questions that you guys have at all. Right, so those are, he's asking about the full year courses and course selection. So yes, typically in those core areas, you're making that selection for all year long. This S1 and S2 are the boxes on that pink sheet for the full year course. Yep, and then where there's the single boxes for the electives, and this kind of holds true for as you go into the upper grade levels, the sheets are kind of all designed in that same way that a one semester course in, for example, drawing, painting, pottery, could be either first or second semester, but for sure when you're looking at full year courses, you're gonna have a semester one and a semester two choice. Typically, we're gonna catch that if a student were to put English nine and then honors English nine, we want them to be the same class all year long. Yeah. Yeah, he's asking about the math options. So a few years back, left my little clicker over here, I'll jump back to that. A few years back, um, the high school went to really just a starting point with geometry here. And so if your students are in eighth grade math or advanced eighth grade math, they would be going into geometry. Um, some students who are in advanced math eight would be going into making that choice to go into honors geometry. Um, from there, they can continue in the honors pathway, which is that third one down, honors advanced algebra, which this should read A and B. There's kind of a new sequencing of courses. Um, it kind of shows up here. Um, for students that struggle in math, I guess I'll start there, kind of back up to the top. If students are struggling, they would take geometry, and there's actually going to be an option to have a supported um, math study hall similar to what the middle school has done um, but specific to geometry. We know we tried and applied geometry this year and the math department's trying some different things so from there students would go into um, from geometry into an advanced algebra A and advanced algebra B so it's breaking that advanced algebra A and B course up into two years so a little bit slower pace so students can get those concepts and the standards they need and then they'd have the option to go into pre-calc from there Traditionally though, the typical student in either eighth grade math or advanced math is gonna do geometry, advanced algebra A and B, pre-calculus, and then they can choose between AP stats, AP calc, or if they're considering the IB program, IB math. Um, the honors is a little different because if students are going that path, they have honors geometry, honors advanced algebra, 
and then they go into um, AP Calculus or AP Stats. So they really skip over, if you're kind of jumping here, in those two years of math, and especially the Honors Advanced Algebra and Trig course, they're skipping over the pre-calculus and making the leap right into AP Calc or AP Stats. Generally, those students are ones that might be doing IB, um, and so they are going to be going in. They kind of put that AP Calc or AP Stats in there as a filler, so then they can go into the AP Calc or IB Math higher level um, when they're seniors and take that test. It really, you know, depends once you get into those upper levels what your goals might be and if you're looking at the IB diploma or not. Um, we do have kind of separate meetings along the way about that. There's really no decision going into ninth grade that you need to make about IB at this point. You can choose to do honors. That's certainly the best preparation, but we have had students take regular courses and still be able to go into um, you know, the honors and AP and IB courses and be successful. Hopefully that answered it, yeah. Well, it, some students who have been, she's asking about um, the self-selection in math specifically, and some students who have been in advanced math, or even we've had kids in eighth grade math say they want to do honors geometry, we, we try to catch those by having the eighth grade math teachers screen kind of the list of who kind of apply or says they want to take that, and they might talk to the students and or parents or guardians to kind of say, I'm not sure this is the best choice or placement, um, but kids can and have selected if they've been in advanced um, math, you know, go or advanced eight versus eighth grade math, go into the, um, the honors. And so it's more of a process of, yep, I want to do this, now am I for sure committing to it? Um, and we'd really try to screen those as best we can because it, it just sometimes can be a big leap for students if they are struggling and then they have to kind of keep up at that fast pace for math. Would a ninth grader be able to go into Honors English 10? Is that? Yeah, you know, at this point, um, because they need four years of English, they would choose either English 9 or Honors English 9 because there's certain things that would be in the four years of English that they need. So starting out, you can't make that leap to <laughs> Honors English 10. Um, and that would be where in classes in the core areas, students are mostly grouped with all ninth graders. So then when you get into Honors English 10, that's going to be 10th graders in those courses. This year we had a little difference with, uh, or a little different thing happened with, uh, we did a full year for both ninth and 10th of chemistry because we were flip-flopping the curriculums, but that's pretty rare. rare. Um, this, following this, now it'll be 10th graders take chemistry and 11th graders take bi biology from here on out with our sciences, so it aligns a little bit better with our IB courses. Yes, she's asking about courses, uh, journalism, theater arts, classes like that. Yes, so if a student takes it, it's a one semester course and they typically just take that once, one time throughout. In courses like pottery, for example, there is a pottery two. Um, woodworking has a second level or they have a construction course. So there are some courses that might have a second level, but in theater arts specifically, um, there, there used to be an advanced theater arts, but we really haven't had enough students to be able to offer that. That those students might be ones that would take that musical theater class that I mentioned as they're progressing on if that's something that continues to be offered. Any other questions? A little shout out to the students. I know there's a few students out there, so thanks for coming to listen to this as well. You'll, we'll, you'll see me or another one of the counselors um, in a few weeks, but thank you all for coming tonight and feel free to reach out if you do have additional questions.